Hey, what's up everybody? I'm going to make the argument as to why I believe that the Bitcoin and broader crypto market bottom is in. Now, I could be totally wrong. This is this is my opinion. This is not financial advice. And there are arguments to the bear side. Don't get me wrong on that. But I believe that I have more overwhelming evidence to suggest that the bottom is in, especially for the altcoins. Right. Again, I could be wrong, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to outline everything that I think. Right. Or mostly everything. I'll try to remember. Um, but I'm going to outline most of everything that I see to give us the idea here that the bottom is in. So I'm going to start um, with Bitcoin here and I'm going to actually use the Fed funds rate just for a moment. I usually don't do this at all. But um, there's actually, uh, you know, a good video out there by BCB explaining the, um, the Fed funds rate and all this. Now, this is not my wheelhouse. I'll let him do all that. Um, but uh, just basically in a little overview, I had to share. I had to share this. So, so basically, you know, this is the fractal we've been looking at, right? So we take this fractal and we inverse it to make it fit right you take it over here and then let's flip it upside down and there's your fractal right there right so it's the same style fractal right but what's interesting about this fractal is if you take the top of it right here that actually marked the top of this basically this bear flag here so we came down we had a big bear flag and that's when they started raising rates right in here, right? So as we started going higher in the rates, what happened? We totally collapsed to the downside. But then what happened? Then we started to level off. We started to slow down a little bit. That's when the, that's when the Bitcoin bottom was in. Remember, everyone said, we're going down to 10K. We're going down to 8K, 14K, right? Why? Because the Fed funds rate is going higher. A lot of people got blindsided of the fact that, number one, they thought a stock market crash was going to occur. Number two, they thought the Fed funds rate was going to capitulate Bitcoin even further. But... I was out here saying that, you know, one, two, three, four, five. We had five waves down. We had divergence between the fourth and the fifth, right? And we we met the extension from this A, this B, and this C, right? It was a perfect setup. And then also we had a completed crashing structure, right? We also was creating a base down in here, right? And then also the Fed funds rate was starting to slow down. Um, and that's when we really started to kick to the upside. But anyways, we as as this thing started to level off, that's when Bitcoin really started to accelerate, right? But now here we are, the roles are reversed. Now this is going to start coming down. So here's the thing. If this blue fractal right here is exactly where we were here and that's where we started dropping during a rate hike. But now we have a cutting cycle about to happen and we are in the same spot in where we were over here so what do you think is going to happen well if you basically everything's the opposite the fractal is inversed that's the opposite we're having a lowering instead of a hike and this is a bull flag instead of a bear flag so the idea is that we're going to break out to the upside and get that fifth wave and that's been my main idea for a long time, ever since we've been in this correction, I felt that this was a wave one, this is a wave two, this is a wave three, this is a wave four, right? So that's number one, is the Fed funds rate, is the fact that we're gonna have a cutting cycle, right? So we could have maybe another couple months of you know, this fifth wave coming in, which could provide a massive alt season. And I'm going to show you an altcoin fractal that's going to completely blow your mind, right? And it's very, very bullish. So stick around for that. But let's continue on with Bitcoin here. So this is idea number one, or this is reason number one, I feel that the bottom is in because now money's going to be cheaper, right? Um, interest rates are coming down. 
but the actual cutting cycle, right, could cause, I mean, there's a little bit of controversy as to what happens. I mean, if you look at the stock market, the cutting cycle oftentimes signals a recession and later on the market crashes, but sometimes the market actually goes up for a few more months and has another blow off top. So we'll see how that works. With crypto, it's a little bit subjective. But uh, if you layer in everything else I'm about to tell you, I think um, we'll, we'll have a better understanding. Right? So, again, this fractal came down. Rates went higher. This is coming. Rates are going lower, and the fractal is inversed. So that should mean we can break to the upside. Okay, so let's take this. Let's take everything off the screen now. Let's get rid of that so we don't need that anymore. And if you want, go to uh, BCB. He did an excellent video on the Fed funds rate. Again, I'm not an expert in that, but I wanted to share that as one of my reasons, right? You know, because it's all about having confluence in ideas. And even that, if that means, um, you know, having to look at things that I normally wouldn't look at. Um, even though we all should. So, uh, the other main thing is that we're coming back above the bull market support band. Now it's not confirmed yet, but this is a big deal. You could say, well, we got above it over here. We failed. We got above it over here. We failed. And now we're getting back above it again. So if we can get back above it again, then, um, it's showing resilience. You can see kind of like how it was happening over here, right? We came down, we hit it, we failed. We came down, we hit it, we failed. We came down, we hit it, we failed. And then on one, two, three, on the fourth try, that's when we completely busted above it, right? So we had one try, we had two tries, right? This is the third try. So maybe we might need one more, right? But um, it, it basically increases the probability that we are because you can see the bull market support bands angled down but look what we're doing we're coiling around the bull market support band so it's kind of like a coil right we're coiling like we're a snake we're coiling around it we don't want to let go we're holding on for dear life right hodl so that's reason number two is the bull market support band without the bull market support band we have no bull market right Okay, so reason number three, this is a bull flag. This is very bullish, right? This is a bullish setup right here. Um, so, and this is in the same degree. So we have one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, right? Flagging out, one, two, three, four, five, and now we're flagging out again. So one, two, three, four, and let's get five. So that's reason number two, or that's reason number three, right? Is um, uh, a five waves up, right? So reason number four is a complex correction. Now, there's uh, a few ideas here, right? So idea number one is that this is an A, this is a B, and this is a C, right? And then we had an A, B, C, a flat here for wave B, right? And we had five waves down in C, five waves down in A, right? So this is, um, this is idea number four. And now we have one, this is a wave one, explained flat for wave two, and now we're about to go up in that wave three and that's looking really, really good, right? So, um, I gotta keep an eye on the small time frames. Whoops. So sorry about that. I was in a I'm short term trading and I had to keep I had to monitor the smaller time frames. But anyways, um, we have obviously this bullish correction here, ABC. We have a one. We have an expanded flat for two. And the idea here is 
that we're going to get a wave three, right? Um, and then hopefully, you know, we, we start to flag out in here, right? And then we get that extended fifth wave. So that's the bullish look for it, right? So that's idea number four or reason number four as to why I think the bottom is in. Now, um, another reason too, and I'll still count this as reason number four, is that we have three down, we have three up, this could be three back down, right? But I don't like it anymore because we're breaking away. So we have three up, this could be three down like this, and then we get five up or three up, right? So the whole thing becomes boom, boom, boom. So three up, three down, and then we get five. And then we we sort of uh, flag out in here and then we continue into that fifth wave, right? So it starts off as an ABC, but it can end into a fifth wave. So that's another uh, a reason. So um, so reason number five is, is really just kind of like the fundamentals of Bitcoin, right? The fundamentals of rising inflation, um, protecting your purchasing power, right? Crypto is an anti-debt instrument. Um, basically, the hodler's case for crypto. And then also, um, adding to reason number five is because um, we're getting, there's so much optimism. There's so much to look forward to, right? There's a lot to look forward to in regards to crypto. For example, we just had the Bitcoin ETF launch um, not so long ago, right? Uh, we had the Ethereum ETF launch, which is a big deal, right? We just had XRP, the Grayscale Trust, get launched, right? So we have a lot of inflows and outflows of the ETF, but overall, it's increasing adoption. It's allowing people who can't really have access to crypto to now have access, right? So it's it's expanding. We also have Trump at a Bitcoin bar on Fed Day. I mean, think about that. I put a video out yesterday. Watch it. It's I go over my thoughts about it, but it's crazy. I mean, think about it. This guy is at a Bitcoin bar in New York City the day that the Fed decided to lower rates. It's a monumental day for the Fed and for the economy, right? They call it Fed Day. It happens once in a while. So they lowered the rates and what, and, and Trump could have done anything in the world. What did he do? He made a for his first Bitcoin transaction at a Bitcoin bar. I mean, come on, that is a message. That is a direct message to everybody that, hey, you know, I, I, I'm down with, I, I'm, I'm supporting Bitcoin, right? So I believe Trump's going to win. The election, I believe they're not going to let him in the White House that easily. I believe he ultimately will win through the Supreme Court. This is my prediction. Mark my words. I could be wrong, but this is what I believe. And eventually he's going to get in. But more so, adding to reason number five, we're going to get what? Regulation. The biggest thing that could possibly happen to crypto. So it's going to be a very interesting uh, time, right? And then with regulation, right, we, we, we know the bill, Senator Loomis passed the bill or, you know, they, they passed the bill through the House. Now it's got to move to the Senate. What the hell are they waiting for, right? Why are they taking so long, right? I think when Trump gets in, it's going to move along. And another reason to add to number five, why the bottom is in, right? Um, and, 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 and these reasons really don't really mean anything because just because these reasons are there doesn't mean that it's a short term price movement. Uh, you know, the bottom is in. But it's just the reasons I'm saying now is more for the broader sense, for the more of the macro longevity of crypto, not necessarily a short term bottom. Right. But I'm just adding to that bullish case because I don't think it's been completely priced in yet. I, I, I really don't. So I think that, um, you know, once Trump gets in, once we have Gary Gensler getting fired and once regulations are full intact and they pass it through the Senate, pass it through the uh, and the White House, signs it. Boom. We're ready, set, go. Right. 
So another reason too is like, for example, XRP. There's a lot of ammunition over there in regards to, we just had the XRP Grayscale Trust. We just, we're going to get the XRP ETF, which is going to be a big, big deal for altcoins and crypto, right? And we are going to see uh, probably more altcoins get maybe like, for example, Theta, right? I got Theta here on the screen and I'm gonna about to show you a fractal here in just a moment. I mean, you can see this right here and that's gonna be later on. But essentially, right, um, you know, there's a lot of optimism around, you know, a, pr probably another altcoin ETF or maybe like a basket of ETFs. So those, those are just a little bit of the fundamental reasons. And then also, right, we live in a central banking system. It's a fraud. It's a debt-based system, right? Crypto is um, anti-bank, right? Anti-debt, decentralized. I mean, you, you know all these reasons, right? And then also another reason is utility. Utility is going to really push crypto values through the roof as we go into this new era in time, right? Right now, everybody's so used to the current financial system, uh, as far as the traditional banking system and things like that, which reminds me, right, Trump and his son are starting a DeFi uh, system, a decentralized finance platform or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, um, but that's a big deal. That means they are positioning themselves ahead of what's to come, right, because they know all of this stuff is going to be needed, right? I believe the system is going to have a lot of problems and the banks are going to come out and they're going to introduce their CBDC. And what is Trump and the Patriots going to do? They're going to say, no, we don't want that. Let's back the system by gold. Let's uh, have a gold standard and let's have it on the blockchain. Let's have a crypto standard, right? So I think it's going to be crypto, gold, and Trump versus the deep state, the central banks, and the CBDC. So I think it's going to be an epic showdown. I could be totally wrong, but this is what I believe. So um, now all of that fundamental stuff is out of the way. And, the, and the, really the big thing is utility. So let's continue with the price analysis. So I'm going to jump into the altcoins now. But before I do that, it would be a shame if I didn't talk about the bear side of things, right? So um that was five reasons it was actually a lot more than five but i will just say five that was five reasons as to why i think the bitcoin bottom is in and then the whole market the other idea here is that if if we have another low and this again this becomes um you know three up three down and then we go up in five if we break this low but then have a v bottom recovery then that still applies for a fourth wave, okay? But if we break the low and we come up and we get rejected here as resistance, and then we start to come down, then we're gonna look at it as reaccumulation because there's really two ideas, up or down, obviously. I've been on the side of the that we're gonna go up, right? But we could very well go down, and if we did, that would actually be very, very bullish. Why? Because we would have a rise, crash, retrace. We would go down into reaccumulation. The five phases of the market blast off. And that's exactly what we did over here, right? We had a rise, crash, retrace. We went into reaccumulation. We went sideways. We blasted off, right? So that could happen again. I'm not saying it will, but, you know, that is definitely a big, major possibility that we all have to be aware of. Okay, so now let's go to a theta. And this is where the fun starts. This is where the fun, fun, fun starts right in here. So let me actually go to this chart here. So, and I'm using theta as an example. This applies to all the altcoins, XRP. It applies to all of them, Matic, Filecoin, Meme, it doesn't matter. It's all of the coins, all the altcoins. But I'm using theta as an example because I like it um especially the structure of it right so 
the reason why I believe the bottom is in, this is reason number six now, and now we're moving into altcoins, um, is because, let's start from the beginning. Number one, we, we created a massive base, right? And we exploded to the upside, creating that massive wave, right? And then we came down and we built a base in here. Right, right at that 50%. So we had an impulse to the upside, a pullback, a bear market, and now we formed a base halfway in this leg here. That tells me that sellers are exhausted and buyers are stepping up to the plate. Okay, so then what happened as we move forward with reason number five? Well, what then happened was we created this Wyckoff structure in here, right? And then we actually created uh, yeah, this Wyckoff structure. And we actually created a miniature Wyckoff structure right in here. And right in here is actually when I first started doing videos right back over here. And I, the reason I did is because I felt that the bottom was in and I felt that things were going to get exciting because when you're in the middle of a bear market and you're going down, 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 nobody really wants to watch. Nobody really wants to care everybody's kind of just waiting and going about their lives but once we start exploding to the upside that's when things get exciting so that's why i decided to do to start doing videos more religiously back over here right so we made it to our retracement level right up here right i thought it could get a little bit higher but it's okay we we made it to the breakdown area which is here right so then what happened so then we we came up right and we tag that area and what's important here is that when as we were going up we sliced right through it as we were going down we sliced right through it to the downside and then here's your resistance here we broke out and look what we did we sliced right through it and we made it to the resistance right and then what happened here's the here's the big point right here so as once that was done then we had a completed crashing structure to the downside. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we actually, um, let me take this one here. We actually are back testing the top of this Wyckoff structure. So that's reason number, uh, what is it, five or six. So uh, that's reason number five. So I think, um, you know, this is a very, this is a very good possibility that the bottom is in, right? And then you could even add to that um, another reason too, is because of this fractal here, right? So when you look at Bitcoin, you can see the same kind of style, right? We had a, uh, we came down, right? We played around, um, we had five waves down, we hit the high, we swung down, made a new low, right? So. If we look at it side by side, so just pause the video and just look at it. I mean, just look at this, right? This is this is reason number six as to why I believe the bottom is in. Probably one of the better reasons. Um, I mean, this thing is perfect, right? Obviously, we started going up, started going up. We made a top here in Bitcoin. Same thing with Theta. What did we do? We came down and we flagged out. Same thing here. We came down, we flagged out. And then what happened? And then we had one, two, three, four, five waves down. Same thing with Bitcoin. One, two, three, four, five waves down. And then what did we do? We sort of made a little bit of a bounce. And then bam, we took out the low. That's exactly what Theta did. We came up, we had a bounce, and boom, we took out, out the low. So we have a completed crashing structure. We have a completed structure of you know basically the process of a uh of a correction right so it's looking really really good and then what happened with bitcoin well if you look closely bitcoin came up and made this little teepee thing right you can see like a little triangle here like this little tiny house right i mean you can see that right i mean just look at this right so now all right we hit the low we made a little bit of a teepee, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a pointy hat, right? And then what happened? And then we exploded to the upside, right? So if we look at, 
if we look at theta, it's literally the exact same structure, guys. I mean, come on, it's the same thing. So, yes, it could be invalid. Yes, it could break away. But, I mean, as of right now, it looks really, really good. So you can see that little tiny blue dot there. That's where I think Bitcoin is. I mean, that's where I think theta is on the broader scale, right? Which means we are still very early. We are so, so early, right? So if we look at theta again, what do you think could happen here? Well, what happened with Bitcoin? We shot to the upside. We came down. We sort of back tested. So we would shoot up. We would come down. We would back test. And then we shot up again. And then we kind of went sideways in here. And then we pulled back. And then we exploded into that third wave. So that could that could happen again. And, uh, and that's basically why I believe that theta is going to make its way into its retracement levels, right? So we had a crash and it's a completed crashing structure. We had seven waves down, right? Counting the sub waves. Um, and now what happens after a crash is what? A retracement. We need a retracement now. So does that mean that we're going to go straight up into a retracement? No. But what that does mean is we're starting the bottoming process. So when I go back over here on the live chart, right, this is part of the bottoming process. And what does that mean? We're building a base down in here, right? This is very important. We're building a base. We're building a structure. Where are we building that structure? We're building it on top of our primary base, which is extremely important because you know, a bottoming process that tells me that bulls are stepping up to the plate. It also tells me that um, we're getting, re you know, um, exhausted to the downside, which then leads me into my my uh, six, seventh reason. Right. I mean, I'm going to start I'm going to stop counting now because I think it's ridiculous. Right. I mean, it's still a lot of uh, of reasons. But look at this. Um, Right. This this bottoming process here. Yes, we could still come down. But what's really interesting, though, is that this wick right here, we came down and we wicked back up. Right. But what's even more interesting is when I go and I turn on the sequential and I go to the two week chart. So this is reason number six or seven or who, who cares about this point. So I think that. This is one of the biggest reasons right here. This is a very rare buy signal. This is a two week nine buy. So if you don't know what that means, just go to Google, type in TD sequential and it'll and you can read about it and exactly how it works. Now, if you want this indicator, you can't just type in TD sequential. You have to type in trend reversal predictor. Now, that's a little bit different than mine, but it's exactly the same. Right. So this is uh, the indicator. And what I really like about it is, number one, we have a perfected nine. Right. Which basically the candles came down in a nice orderly fashion. And look at all those red candles that those are two week candles. We have. Um, let's see, we have. How many candles is that? Ten bars. That's 20 weeks. We've been going. Think about that. We've been going down for 20 weeks. 20 20 that's a long time that's a lot of red candles right there that's 10 two week red candles so the statistical probability of that continuing is very very small right so then what happened we landed on a nine buy and that right there and i talked about this the last several months that you know we're, we're gonna land on this nine here and then more importantly, we I mean, equally importantly, we had five waves, right? And then also we're back at support. So that's the reason. And then another reason, too, is look at what we're doing. We're building a base upon the nine, right? And that's exactly what I said would probably happen, um, which is, right, we have the nine. Just because you have a nine doesn't mean it breaks out right away. 
Remember, this is a this is the two week chart. It takes a long time, and this is very rare. You can see what happened the last time we had a nine buy. The problem with that nine is it wasn't perfected, right? So it actually had one more low, but then it once you can see this nine here, it printed these red dots. Once we broke above those red dots, it was game over, right? Same thing that happened over here. This was the other nine. Again, it's only happened two other times in Theta's history. This nine also wasn't perfected. We actually ended up coming back up and then slamming back down into the low. But this is the first two-week nine buy in Theta's history that's actually perfected. And it's actually in the right spot. So if there's any nine that can get the job done, it's this one right here. And what I really, really like about it is look how we're flipping from red to green, red to green. That tells me, you know, from we're doing so, we're flipping red to green, red to green on the bottom, right? That tells me that we're building a base, we're establishing support. So it is statistically more likely that we're going to go higher into a retracement. So let me put the retracement here, right? So look at that, $2.35 all the way up to $3.50. So we'll just say three bucks, right? So we should see a $3 retracement. So that's what I'm calling for is a $2.50, $3 retracement. Um, and then once we get there, remember, because this is point A, I always say this, the top of the wave is point A, the bottom of the wave is point B. The top is easy. It's easy, right? You don't want to sell, but it's easy because we have the amount of waves, right? The bottom is also easy. Why? Because we can count the waves, right? And we have a nine and, and we're back testing and other things like that. So point A is easy, point B. So then what happens? Then we come up and now we're in point C. That's when it becomes difficult. That's when it becomes hard, right? Is in the retracement levels. That's why I'm letting you know now, once we get up here, if we get up here, I believe we will, right? Even if we have to come down and make one more tiny little low, or even if we have to come down and retrace some of this wick right here, you see that wick right there, right? Look how big that wick is. If we have to come down and retrace some of that wick, whatever. The point is, once the bottoming process is complete, I believe we're going up here. Once we get up there, that's when it becomes difficult because then we don't really know, is this just a retracement with more downside or is this thing gonna break us out to the upside, right? So we could see, um, let's see how would I want to do this. We could see, right, uh, well, another reason too is that this is a one, two, one, two, right? And then if we come up, we should get a wave three, right? I mean, that would be the simple idea. Um, the other idea is we come up here and uh, we start flagging out. And that's what I think is going to happen. So let me actually show you what the route is going to look like or what I believe the route should look like. So let me go to the two day chart. And this applies to all the altcoins, not just theta, right? So it applies to all of them. So what I think the route is going to look like, by the way, we have to get back above the bull market support band. So I am not right now. I'm like 70 percent there. You know, with the two week nine, with all the reasons, with Bitcoin, with things like that. So in order for me to get to like 85, 90 percent there, number one, we have to get back above the bull market support band on a lot of altcoins. And number two, the election has to be sort of smooth, which probably won't happen. But anyways, um, what this would look like to me is... Um, you know, coming back up here, we're probably going to get a little bit of a pullback, right? Um, but then eventually we're going to break out and we're going to get back above to this dollar ninety area, $2 area, right? So let actually, and I've talked about this before. So let me just put a little bit of a zone here. And then let me put 
another zone like right here, right? So this is gonna be, and you can see the same kind of thing happening, right? As soon as we sliced, as soon as we went up through here, we sliced right through it. And then as soon as we lost it, we sliced right through it to the downside. So once we get back up here and we break out, we're gonna slice right through it. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna flag out, flag out, flag out. We're gonna flag out to the downside. We're gonna back test this right in here, right? And then we're gonna continue higher into the retracement levels. And that's where I'll stop it. Because from there, it's gonna be kind of difficult for me. I can make assessments, right? Maybe a little pullback, a continuation from there, and we break out to the upside. Or worst case, well, worst case scenario that this is an ABC. And that could happen, right? But, and that would be what? That would be three up, we would have three down, and then we would have five up or three up, but it would be explosive, right? But uh, we would have to get strongly rejected here to, for that to come true. Um, the more likely situation would be A, uh, or more likely to that would be going into sort of reaccumulation. So we come up, we make a retracement, right? We get up here between two and three dollars and then we come down. So the bull market support band starts to wrap around like this, right? And we come up here, we flag out a little bit, we get to the retracement levels and then we kind of come down into reaccumulation. So we have a rise, crash, we go up into a retracement. We still need a retracement and then we go into reaccumulation. And we kind of go sideways in here a little bit, letting the bull market support band catch up, back testing the bull market support band, and then exploding to the upside like a madman, right? Like crazy, like grandma stealing a Corvette, like that kind of style, right? I mean, just blasting through. So um, that's kind of how I envision it happening. And... It's not really a reason why I think the bottom is in. That's just kind of my projections, right? So what's another reason why I think the bottom is in? Well, let's move over to XRP now. And I'm going to go back to theta on the small time frame. So just bear with me here. Um, this is looking really bullish, guys. I mean, honestly, when we look at the charts here, like look at Bitcoin's up 2%. You know, Zcash is up three and three and a half percent, but XRP is only up one percent. Womp womp womp. Um, Bit, uh, Theta was actually up like seven percent the other day, so that's why it's not doing as well. Look at Solana though. Solana is up almost seven percent, so that's looking pretty good. But we're coming up here. We're getting. You know, we need to get above these bull market support bands. Now, thankfully for XRP we are above the bull market support band. So it's looking really, 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 really good, right? So another major reason why I think the bottom is in is because when you look at XRP, I mean, this says it all right here. And I, I've been through this many, many times, but just real quick, right? You could pause the video and you can compare. Look at this right in here and look at this right in here and look what happened, right? We had a rise, crash, retrace. We went down into reaccumulation. Box number one, box number two, liquidity grab, blast off. Same exact thing. We had a rise, crash, retrace, went down into reaccumulation. Box number one, box number two. And then what did we do? We had that liquidity grab just like we had back over here. And then what was the next move? Blast off. And where does all of this co coincide? The Fed funds rate, right? So remember the, in the beginning of the video, there's a reason why I showed that. Because for Bitcoin, right, if we take that inverse fractal that we were looking at, and we sort of make the argument that we're in this fourth wave and we should get this fifth wave to the upside. Is there any confluence in that in XRP? And the answer is absolutely 100%. Because if you look at all of the steps that we just did, 
right? We should be on our way to the upside. Now, is it going to blast off in a straight line? I have no idea. But the idea is that we should break to the upside. This is going sideways. We're building a platform. This is going to be a massive move. And if you're an XRP hater, you're going to miss out on this. I'm telling you, this is not financial advice, right? I can only say what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is... Um, is buying right i'm accumulating and for me when i look at all the charts xrp right now is my favorite chart why because it already completed all of the steps right so when you look at theta for example theta is like right in here so theta broke out and now it back tested so that's where theta is right there now that doesn't mean theta is going to come up into a retracement then have to go down into reaccumulation that just means that's where theta is at. But when you look at XRP, XRP already went into a retreat. That's another reason why, um, you know, putting the rest of the market aside, uh, why I believe XRP is so bullish is because XRP never broke out into a bull run in 2021 when the rest of the market was like Dogecoin, SHIB, Matic. Solana, you know, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Theta, all of them. They were all going into a massive bull run. But what was XRP doing, right? While all the altcoins and Bitcoin was out partying, drinking, having a good time, XRP was home working out, studying for the exam, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a bad analogy, but you know what I mean. So then the bear market occurred. But XRP didn't go into a bear market because it's all, it's been in a bear market this whole time. And then what happened? And then it bottomed out. And then we started going into reaccumulation, right? So that's another reason why that I think the bottom is in for XRP. Um, now, uh, what's another reason? Well, if I take everything off the screen, right? If I take it all off the screen, we have a triangle this is another reason we have an a b c d e right this was a triangle that led to an explosive breakout the same thing happening now a b c d and now i want to bring your attention to e so let's zoom in here to wave e now remember an elliott wave triangle every wave needs three right so you can see clearly we have three down we have three up, we have three back down, we have three back up, and now let's look at wave E. Do we have three waves down? And this is, a, and you guys already know, one, two, three. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have three waves to the downside. And what happened after that three wave move to the downside, finishing up wave E? What happened after that? We, ex we had this huge divergence, but we also had this huge wick. Look at that candle right there. That's a massive candle, right? And that sucker exploded us back above the bull market support band. So we have sort of this wave one, and now we're kind of consolidating here for a wave two. Now, could it come down and tag the low down here? and retrace some of this wick down here at 47 cents. Yeah, that's still possible, right? As long as we are holding above um, this low in here, right? We do not want to break back below uh, these lows. Definitely don't want to do that, right? So I think that just adds, what is it, reason number seven, eight, nine now, right? So, um, yeah, I think it's a very plausible argument to show that this thing is getting ready to explode to the upside. Another reason, too, is because, let me show you the smaller time frames, is because when you look at the smaller time frames, if this is three up, and this is three down, and then this is five, one, two, three, four, five, this is a three-way move. So if this is three, right, and this is a three-wave move here, so one, two, three, so that means we have a W or an A, 
and then we have an X, right? And then I would actually say A, and this is a B, right? And then what happens? And now this is one, two, let's get wave three, four, and five, and that would be wave C. So we would have three up, three down, and then we would have five up. But it's not going to just be a regular five-way move. I think it's going to be a massive five-way move. Why? Because look how massive the freaking correction is. This thing, this is a one-year-long correction. Remember, Judge Torres came out right here with her XRP is not a security. Um, anyone with common sense could know that, right? So from here was July of 2023. And then the bottom here was actually July of 2024. I mean, come on, think about that. Isn't that crazy? That's a one year long, um, uh, that's a one year long correction, right? So this is a beautiful three wave and that would be wave E, right? That's the final wave. So now we have all of that taken care of. So now let's zoom in to what's happening now. Look at this, guys. This is a bullish hammer candle. This is looking really nice. Um, so let's zoom in to the daily. And you can see very clearly, after we had this, this super long correction, this three-wave correction to the downside, we had this huge impulse to the upside, right? So if we look at that, uh, I just had it. We have one, two, three, four, and five. Now you could say four here and five here. I mean, it, it you know, but I look at that as more of a correction. So then what do we have? Well, we have this move down, this move up, and this move down. So that's three. So we'll say W, and then what do we do? We came up in three, so that's X, and then we came down in three, and that's Y, and that's a W, X, Y. That's a three-wave, extremely bullish correction, if you ask me. I could be wrong, right? And if I'm wrong, I will admit it, and I'll, you know, it, it is what it is, right? You can't always be right. Um, so a lot of the things... We've been getting right pretty, pretty much, uh, I would say, pretty consistently. Um, there's been a lot of things that were also wrong uh, as far as the Bitcoin correction, what it could be. But that's why we have multiple ideas. And that's why if one idea doesn't play out, it's not about it playing out. It's about ruling out what it's not, right? So it's kind of like if you're a homicide detective, you want to rule out the suspect. Right? You're not trying to pinpoint who the suspect is necessarily. You're trying to rule out everybody and narrow down to one person. Right. So anyway, we have this five wave move. Remember, this is wave E down here. This is the bottom. So following that, we have five waves up and we have three waves down. So this is your impulse and this is your three wave correction here. It helps if I if you can kind of see it right and that's a flat that's a running flat very very bullish and now what the hell is going on here well number one we came down to the bull market support band and we're back testing it right so now this thing needs to go up that's what i believe that's what i think i could be wrong but that's what i believe i think this thing should be breaking out pretty soon now what i would do is i would just simply take this and draw a downward resistance line whoops there we go and you can actually actually we already broke above the downward resistance line but if i just go wick to wick here uh actually let me let's go to the four hour chart and do it here so we're there's no what ifs ands or buts okay so let's go right there there we go uh right there perfect so um that's the downward resistance line i'm looking for right and you can see here's your that's your supply line so here is our demand line right so this is our demand line and you can see what it's doing it's creating this sort of triangle here 
Um, very bullish, I think. So, all right, so now we established all of that. So now let's look at what's going on right now, today, this moment, right? I mean, you can see we're starting to pump. You can see XRP is actually kind of pumping right now. And just in Solana, uh, let's see. Sorry, one moment. Just have to check on the small time frames. Yeah, you can see Bitcoin's kind of coming down. I actually entered short for a, just, a, just a tiny little small term trade right here. And just kind of letting it play out a little bit. So there we go. I'm uh, 8%. Uh, 8%? Hey, I'll take 8% profit all day. Okay, sorry about that. Now, all right, back to back to XRP. Look at this thing. This thing's still doing pretty nicely. Okay, so I got to get this video out before it breaks out or otherwise people will say oh you knew it was going to happen no nah, i don't know i have no idea i could be wrong but anyway let's 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 pay attention to what's happening right now right and i don't know what reason is this reason number eight nine ten eleven twelve forty nine i don't know so uh let's look we have a one two perfect we have a one two perfect we have a three four five so we have a one two all of that's three and what do we have now Look what we have now, guys. I mean, it's textbook. It's perfect. Look at this. Look at this. You already know what I'm going to say. Look at the three wave shape. Look at this. I'm just going to keep drawing it so we can have it imprinted in our heads. Look at that three wave shape. That is what I live for. And that is why I recommend you guys subscribing to the channel. And if you want to become a member, you can as well because I go more in depth into sort of the strategies and give you a little bit more bonus, right? I mean, I already do like hour long videos, right? So I'm already giving tons of information. But if you want even more, you can, uh, you know, sub uh, subscribe to or join uh, the membership and just where you click subscribe, just click join and try it out for a month, maybe try it out for a couple months. And if you like it, great. If you don't, just no problem, cancel it. But if you want to support the channel, just hit the like button. It really helps. Um, but anyways, you know, this is what I teach. This is what, you know, this is why my videos are long, because I, I kind of go through step by step by step. It's not a clear cut and dry situation, right? I mean, I could easily do a 10 minute video and show you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I like to give more to the audience for those who are wanting to learn, right? For those who are wanting to sort of go through the thought process of how we approach the, the, the certain wave structure, what to look for, right? And things like that. So that's why, right? So we have a wave one. We have a wave two. This came up into a wave three. Look at this beautiful three-way pullback for a wave four. Now, is it possible that the fourth wave can get more complex? Yes. And how is that possible? Well, this could easily, guys, this could easily have a three-wave down, right? This could be a three-way back up, and then we can get maybe five down. So it could be like an expanded flat. It could turn into a bigger correction. You see what I mean? But even if that's the case, and I, I think this is even possible, we could come up and tag the high and then slam right back into the low. Why do I say that? Well, I don't know if it's quite likely, but it could be. The reason why is the bull market support band. We broke above the bull market support band, but we never came back down to back test it. See, that's always the issue I have, right? So for example, you know, we broke above it, we sliced right through it. We sliced right above it, we came right below. But we never actually came down and tested it and, and, and you know, and made love to it. You know what I mean? And I'll give you a good example. Um, XRP right here. This is a really good example. Look at this. Uh, where are you at? Hold on. Just give me a second here. If I can go back this far, I don't know. Okay, yeah, right here. So... Um, this was C19, right? We made a little bit of a roundabout. And then what did we do? We blasted off and then we came down. And what did we do? We created a beautiful base down here at the bottom here. And look what we did. 
we hit the bull market support man i mean look at that look at all those tests this was extremely bullish and i remember this time right and it just took forever but we were going sideways it was bullish we were back testing you know this area right here you can see that right we broke above this area we came down we back test and we were creating this base right so we kind of had like you know three down three up right like i always say three down or three up three down and look what we did we blasted off and look how massive that pump is to the upside right and then of course the sec came out and nailed us to the ground and that's why we had that big dump to the downside but then what happened after that right you can see we had one two three four one two three four five six seven waves down we came up and then what did we do we flagged out so this is where i think you know theta the the all the broader altcoin market is right in here i think we're going we're approaching the bull market support band and then once we get there we're probably going to flag out and then we need to break out come down back test you know do a rise crash retrace reaccumulation sideways blast off i mean that is textbook beautifulness that's exactly what we want to see right so that's fast forward today i mean you could say that could be something a little bit similar right um so you know even if we did have to come down here uh kind of like a, a rise crash retrace reaccumulation but i would argue that this is a rise crash retrace now we're going down into reaccumulation now we're kind of going sideways in here and that's where we want to break out so and as i'm speaking we're almost at 60 cents um now it doesn't feel like it right because xrp has been beaten up so much over the years so it's just incomprehensible it's inconceivable that xrp can even be above a dollar even be you know, or $2 or $3, right? So, I mean, people don't even know what it feels like to have a $1 XRP because it's like foreign to them, right? It's like, um, you know, going to another country and trying their food for the first time. It's like, wow, what is this, right? It could be good. It could be not so good. So um, um, I actually tried South West. No, I think it was... Hold on, it's right. It's West African. I tried a West African dish. It was really good. I mean, it was amazing. I didn't think I would like it that much. Um, it was called Black Eye Pea and Sweet Potato Nandambi or something. It was from Chef Pierre Thia Thiam, executive chef co owner in Teranga in New York, brings you traditional sangling z i don't know stew I, I don't know it was really good it was kind of like a it was a frozen thing um i order meals from like mosaic factor um you know different i try different meal services you know because i'm busy and i gotta just throw it in the microwave and warm it up now for dinner we usually cook my wife cooks and things like that but for lunch and things on the go I don't really want to go out and eat McDonald's all, you know, I want to have something healthy, right? So anyways, um, <laughs> I digress. Uh, so back to what I was saying here, uh, I even forgot what I was saying, but I'll just leave you with this. Look at this bull, uh, this sort of bullish hammer candle here. This is exactly what we want to see, right? So again, it's foreign. To, to feel like XRP deserves to be above a dollar, right? And I think eventually we will get there. But the big major test is going to be breaking above this zone here. And I think that is coming, guys. I really do. I think we're going to break. There's a lot of liquidity up here. I mean, there's also a lot of liquidity down here. But look, we tapped into it already. So we break out. We're flagging out. Let's climb up let's break out and then flag out later on so i'm going to jump more into this as the week progresses but let's just look at this smaller time frame chart again this could be an abc it looks like a nice abc right and if i zoom in even closer let's say to the 10 minute chart 
Um, you know, we're getting a little bit of resistance here. I, I wouldn't be surprised that this is like an A, B, C, something like that, like an expanded flat. Remember, we're going into the weekend too, right? So, you know, uh, tomorrow's going to be Friday. It's probably going to start slowing down a little bit. Maybe we have a big Friday. I don't know. But usually over the weekends, things kind of consolidate a little bit. So this is setting the tune for what's to come next week. By the way, the weekly candle, we haven't even looked at it. By the way, can you hit the like button? I mean, I just went over the hour. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to grow this channel a little bit more. And sometimes I'll, you know, I, I, I usually ask once. But I think I'm being a little bit more aggressive now. Only because I really feel in my bones that this thing is going to come. This thing is going to come. And I want people to have that message so maybe that they can, you know, obviously they need to do their own research before they even think about buying. But um, I want people to have that opportunity. And, you know, I'd like the video to get spread out, uh, spread around a little bit uh, more than it has been. Um, but look at the weekly candle. I mean, it looks perfect. It's got a little bit of a tail at the end, which I like. Um, and it's nice and strong, but what are we doing? I mean, look at all of this resistance, all of this resistance in here. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a struggle. I mean, we've been making lower lows all year for the last year. So low, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low. But you can see how the lows are actually getting less and less, right? So if I just draw... For example, like a downward resistance line. I mean, that would be the line to look for uh, for the big breakout. But yeah, the weekly candle looks pretty good. I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow, but I really feel like we're getting really close. And I think people should pay attention. Um, so anyways, that'll do it for this video. I promised I'd look at Theta real quick on the small time frames. By the way, total three is also approaching the bull market support band. Now, this is a big, big, big chart. We have to have total three breakout, right? Because this is the broader altcoin market. This thing, you know, we have a one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're flagging out. Look at this beautiful flag here. We really need to push higher. I mean, that's what we really need to see, okay, for, for everything to work out. But uh, let me go to Theta here. Let's, and by the way, look at the weekly chart on Theta. Guys, the weekly chart on Theta is breaking out, right? So if I put a line at the weekly close here, this will be the highest weekly close. And I'm speaking early. We still need three days left. But um, we have, this will be the highest weekly close since back in July, which is a big deal, right? Because we're almost, you know, and we're in September now. So almost in October. Um, so it's looking really, really, really good uh, for the weekly chart. So let's zoom in here and let's look at the small time frames and let's see if we can figure out what the short term next move is going to be. Um, and it's, it's okay. So that's, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, so this is the this is kind of like the grand finale here for Theta. So look at this. We officially, guys, and I did speak on this on my previous video yesterday when uh, the second video. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, or actually one, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. So that would be one, two, three, four, and then five so we have a five guys theta has a five wave move to the upside and we're right back at resistance this is a really really good thing so what's the next move going to be well i would like to see us have an abc obviously when you have five waves up we want to see an abc now the problem is we don't know if the five waves is done we might need this might be just the first wave right this might be a one, two, three. We have a running flat here for wave four, and then we push up for wave five, one, two, three, four, five, and that's the end of wave five. And then from there, what do we wanna see? 
an A, B, C, a big, a big pullback, right? We want to see a correction. And it could be, you know, three down, three up, and then three back down. It could be a larger three-wave move, right? Where we kind of come back down to support down in here, right? Somewhere in this dollar thirty area. And then we blast off, breaking above. Because, again, we're coming. This is a big cloud right here. We're, we're, we're getting, you know, this is going to be a lot of resistance in here. So, and plus we have five waves to the upside. And plus we had that one hour nine sell. I think it's on Theta as well. Or was it on Bitcoin? Um, but either way, right? We have five waves up, which means, and we also are running into the bull market support band, which means we probably need either this fifth wave to finish to the upside and then get an ABC pullback, right? We want to see a big pullback because that's going to be our slingshot to break above this resistance here. So let me just zoom out a little bit here. Yeah, so, and it's looking quite well. And if I actually do something like this, right? I mean, it's not perfect. It's a, it's a little bit subjective on how we can do it here. But you see what I mean, right? We can actually get up to a dollar fifty, right? Maybe to the top of this um, this channel here, right? So yeah, I think uh, I laid out many many reasons. Again, we ran out of time. I'm, I'm there's definitely more reasons out there. So, um, but if I look at the very small time frame, uh, obviously we're pulling back. This could be one, two, three, four, five. That could be a diagonal that ended the wave. So, okay, yeah, we do have five waves. Look at this. We have one, two, right? One, two, three, four, five. That's three. So one, two. And then we have wave four. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. And that's wave five in our diagonal. Or this could be an A, B, C. And then we go up and wave five maybe tomorrow. But anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll check back in maybe tomorrow or over the weekend or, or something and uh, we'll reevaluate. Um, but yes, you can see the bullishness in my overall thesis. But as far as the small time frames go, we could have some downside momentum, right? Coming back down to backtest this area. So don't be surprised just because we're bullish I mean, obviously we are, but we had five waves, so we really need kind of a correction. So, you know, not to get it twisted. We're not going to go up in a straight line. We do need a correction. We need a pullback. And uh, so I think people should expect that. Now, I really want to do like a rapid fire video, like look at ADA. You know, it doesn't have that bottleneck that I was looking at. It's looking a lot better now. It's kind of going sideways. It's, it's giving me more confidence in it. Um, you know, let's, you know, I still want to talk about Theta Fuel. I mean, look at Theta Fuel. Theta Fuel is doing really well. Uh, you know, it's, it's coming back up to this local high here. Um, you know, Filecoin is also doing okay. It looks like it needs to, uh, break this local high here. I, I know people wanted Ethereum Classic. By the way, I'm going to get to Ethereum Classic as well. I'm going to get to Matic, um, and I'll probably do that on the next video. But this video, I just wanted to go over a few uh, reasons why I think the bottom could be in. Also, XLM, haven't really looked at that. I mean, look at that three-way move there on XLM. Impulse, three-way pullback. So it'll be interesting to see how all of this forms going up into next week and things like that. So anyways, that'll do it for this video. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. And if you can, uh, hit that like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think. And uh, I wanna do a rapid fire. So if there's any coins you want me to look at, you can go ahead and drop them in the comment section and I'll, uh, I'll try to look at them and uh, we'll go from there. But anyways, I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.